October 15, 1971. Hugo Graham, aeronautical engineer, entered his office as he had done every single working day for the past five years. So, anything new? Not a thing. And then, Zabby called. Yeah? What the phone? Joshua Owen, R&D computer expert, once again had started to replace a printed circuit. Then Zabby called. Yeah? Victor Spivak, market analyst, as usual, was Joe. adjusting the morning survey report. Well, I've just been reducing the national average, and the new statistics show that the consumer usage is within 0.12 of last year. That just goes to prove we're still in that same old velvet rut. <laughs> That's right. And then Zabby called. We have salvage rights. And Viasani's map checks out. That day, they left San Francisco and disappeared. For 200 years, the waters of the Caribbean have hidden a chest of gold, lost when Captain Villasante's galleon sank on a shallow reef. From the archives, we learned that the captain had taken what he could to a cave that lay exactly three miles from the wreck. We were going to find it. Uh, the best buy I could find. Big and cheap. You've got to be kidding. Well, really, have a look at it. That's exactly what we need, man. Now, how old do you figure she is? Old 42 vintage, I'd say. It was a good year for trucks. <laughs> you know, it's got plenty of room for our gear, and we can make a camper out of it. <laughs> junk. Vintage junk. Come on. You gotta treat a lady like a lady. Throttle. Half to two thirds open. Glue plug. On. Now then. First a shot of ether to the count of four. One, two, three, four. Then, short the solenoid to the ground. <laughs> well, it's run. Maybe we better not stop her again until we get to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how much? 300 bucks. The price is right. Including two spare tires, a jack, and the use of the workshop. Did I fix it up. say use of the workshop? Use of the workshop, man. That's how long will that take? Well, not long. Depends on how much help I get from you guys and our albatross here. I'm using you vintage. Dum 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 d
Hey, Bennett's just really making time. Yep, order's coming up. Watch it, Sandy. What's so important about your beat-up old briefcase? The map and the exclusive salvage rights. Searching for Viazanti's cave, his gold, and the chest of coins still in the bones of the sunken galleon. Looks like they're feeding vintage to the ship. Really yeah, that sounds fine, but if you thought about how we're really gonna find the cave, it might have been destroyed by the earthquake. Look, I thought about that too. I mean, it's not going to be easy. If we narrow it down with a magnetometer. You really think it's going to be that easy? Yeah, if we follow the report. If Mary is right, you're on board. How are we going to recognize it? You know anybody else that drives a, a wine there? There was a full page in the paper about how they found Via Sade's map. Are you sure they had the exclusive government salvage rights? Sure they got it. Maria saw in the inspector's office. Tell Hartley to get it. Okay. Then I might as well have him lift the uh, tank on for you. Speak up much, so I learned how to speak up quickly, or I didn't. Well, it'd be uh, hey, 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 yes. Excuse me, is, is that your fine looking truck down there? Yeah, what about it? Somebody's stealing your equipment. What? Jet yeah, that's right. South on Interstate 5, a girl on the luggage rack. No, I am not kidding. A girl on the luggage rack. Hey, you want to catch that wagon? I'll bet I can catch anything in this. Yeah!
you get him to turn around? Hey, you're not like old enough to have this car. I stole it in front of the restaurant. Boy, are you going to catch it. Not me. You guys stole it. I'm just bringing it back for him. Yeah, thanks a lot, John. That's really great. What? Asper? Asper Bellagio. Okay. Look, we're spending all our time looking for boats. We've been here nearly two years. Listen. There's no sense chartering a piece of junk. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, hey, thanks again, John. I really appreciate it, huh? Goodbye. I won't believe that till I see it. Oh, yeah. The new boat with good equipment, a compressor, and a crew of two. Eight hundred bucks. What's the catch? No catch. The guy I knew at Yale. The eight hundred's only for three weeks, but I figure it's worth it. Bro, it's an old slow tub. You won't find anything in three weeks. Uh, Twenty-two knots. <laughs> Like the head of Port Antonio. Could have been a way off. That's good. Well, let him lead us to it. Beer, you dummy. Don't be stupid. There's no other road. It goes straight to Port Antonio. Hi. Do you Hi. know which one of these is the O'Key? That's the O'Keefe over there. You don't suppose you could take us out there, do you? Just can't help you, brother. But you see that man over there in a the pink country boat? He'll be able to take you. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Okay, Robin. Let's get going. Hi, Skipper. Asper. Hey! Air. Uh, hey, you ski? A little. Have a 
go? No, I don't think so. Hey, come on! <laughs> See him fly, you waterlogged albatross! <laughs> hey, I'll drop her off the old cue. Jeez, he's a fresh kid. She's my kid. He's a nice kid, though. What did I say? He's not bad. Yeah. Mr. Hampton sends his compliments. I'm Asper. Generations of treasure hunters had tried in vain to find Miyazaki's cave. After years of research, we were sure we had the answer. No one had found it because it was under the water, sunk by the same earthquake that had buried Port Royal. It was now part of this reef. there. Let's go north of Grappler Bank. Mm. Maybe we should swing west a little. 091 magnetic. 091 magnetic. 091 magnetic. Warm up the depth recorder. Well, let's we'll see how much truth there is in those reports on Viasani's cave. No bottom. Yeah? You ever run this channel before? No, man. I always give this place a wide berth. <laughs> hey, it looks shallow. What's on the craft? Nothing. No, wait. It's eight fathoms. It's, right in it's coming up fast. Dead slow ahead. Dead slow. <laughs> Take her up a couple of points to starboard, then ease her back and we'll drop the hook, okay? Uh. Let her go! Hey! Go over and check the reef and then come back, okay? Our motor's operandi was simple. Today we would look the area over, find safe entrance and egress from the reef. Tomorrow, the search would start in earnest. Better start marking these things. Gotta get everything listed, otherwise I'll never be able to tell them apart. It's not fair. Come on, Mark. I want to come in the boat. What do you want to come in the boat for? I mean, you know very well that you can't dive. I don't see why I can't come in the boat. You want to go diving, right? Right. What kind of experience have you got diving? I know what I'm doing. I've already arranged with Asper. He's going to take you and he's going to give you some lessons and he's going to do it every single day while we're out searching for the cave. Okay? Now, first week, snorkel. Second week, scuba. Third week, deep scuba. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can always go home. California's waiting for you. Duh. Just do it. Snorkel, second week shallow scuba, third week deep scuba. <laughs> this was as close to the reef as the O'Keefe could navigate. From now on, it was up to the rubber boats. We were working the familiar grid pattern. Having buoyed the reef, we started the electronic search with. Joshua's wonder box, a sensitive magnetometer that would find the village, and from it, the cave.
of the week. The pieces of our mosaic were almost complete. The magnetometer had traced the edge of the volcanic fault. The cave lay to the west. It would soon be necessary to resort to the glass bottom boat. Back and forth across this shallow reef, we searched for that steep trench we knew just had to be there. Asper had made Zabby go back down. It was important that she learn the vital meaning of that rasping sound. While there was no need to panic, her time below was limited. Let's review everything. First of all, you gotta always check your watch when you go down. There's no excuse for having to go on the table. Staying down too long and making it necessary to decompress. You got that? You ever been on the table, Zaster? Nope. I don't intend to either. There ain't no joke hanging on the end of a rope 40 feet deep, waiting for the nitrogen to dissipate. It doesn't sound so hard. It doesn't sound too hard, huh? Already a veteran of three weeks, and you know everything, huh? Hey, huh? There's something deep ahead. Yeah, see it. There. It was its depth, and its depth alone, that had kept the narrow opening of Via Santi's cave a secret for over 200 years. We moved your keef up, and prepared to dive. 
Uh, if we find the cave, we'll send up the usual marker and you can come over, okay? Okay. Hey, listen, uh, watch for us, will you? You bet. It's deep. <sighs> down to the shelf that bordered the drop-off. According to the chart, an abysmal 1,000 feet. Across the antler car, we split and went in search of the crevice. phosphorescent sponge, our base mark. We swam under a branch of black coral, a sure indication that we were below 120 feet. It was too easy to drop down this face, and below 180 feet we ran the danger of suffering from nitrogen narcosis. The narrow fissure appeared, a miniature Grand Canyon, at the entrance, I put down a yellow marker. Now Josh would know where we were. myself in a cul-de-sac. There had to be another way out. Could this be the base of a chimney? It's about time you guys showed up. Where's Hugo? Isn't he with you? No, we got separated in the cave. He'd be out of air by now. He must be. Man, I am. Brief me. I better go down.
to see you. Well, Vic ran out of here half an hour ago. Did he find anything? Well, welcome to Via Santa's cave. Mm -hmm. Somebody's been here before us. So. Damn. I found some coins, though. Yeah. There must be some more. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll give you one of the coins. <laughs> Let's get out of here. It's getting cold. Which way do you want to go? You want to go that way? You want to go that way? That way. Yes. The cave had been looted before the earthquake. But at least our calculations had been right. And now we could find the galleon. We were inside the reef with a tiny opening to the sky. The only way out was back down the long column of water. And I was low on air. The audio reserve held at the end of my air. Now there would be no room for error. We had to find the mouth of the cave fast. <laughs> The narrow entrance made buddy breathing out of the question. I would have to go alone on one breath. on reserve, and at this depth, I would have to take the chance. You okay? Crazy idiot. You almost killed yourself. Let's go home. out on the cave. But at least we now know roughly where the Santa Victoria lies. Within three miles of the cave. Yes, but that could be east or west, which means you still have six miles of search. We only knew which way. That's a lot of sea to search, even with a magnetometer. That's a piece of eight. Doesn't really look much better than when you first brought it up. Mm -hmm. uh, a piece of eight was made out of a bar of silver. The thing that they would do is they take a bar of silver and then they'd whack a lump out of it, take the bit they cut, put it between a male and a female mole. Now they a bloody blade hammer and they go. <laughs> now, just to make sure that it was the right way, they just take little bits off the edge, just like that. There you go. Piece of eight. Wow, that's beautiful. But there's uh, only three. 
I suppose since you guys found them, you're going to keep them. Right. Well, I don't care. Because when I find mine, it'll be gold. <laughs> Savvy. Some news about a wreck. Galleon. Tell me something, boy. Why aren't you in school? So I think it must be some poor little rich kid sent to torment us. Doesn't your father have anything to say about you wandering about like this? He doesn't know. Now look, Darby, we like him. You're a nice all-American boy, but will you please stay off our boat? I beat it. I just thought you might be interested in where that came from. But. So, get him! Harvey, come back here! Green! Well, it's that nice little boy again. Come here, little boy. Right here. All right, Darby. Let's see the coin. It's a real, all right. Where'd you get it? Have to give it back. Come on, Darby. You know, Ben, he lent it to me. What good does that do us? Oh, we got it. Where? Are you sure you want me to tell you? I think I'm going to help you. You're up in the hills, and the obey man said to follow the stream, the ocean. That's the beach where he found it. Well, which stream? I don't know. It starts up near Bob Walk. Well, how do we get there? The Blue Danube goes right by. The Blue Danube? Goes right by. and they twist about like a bunch of snakes. And the only way you can be sure you're on the right one, you have to follow it all the way down to the sea. That doesn't sound so hard. Yeah, but you gotta remember, there ain't no roads in the jungle. And also the boat's out, so that means we have to walk or wade in the water. Any snakes? Snakes? There ain't no snakes in Jamaica. But if you see one, you yell. And I call for some help. <laughs> <laughs> Darby's gold coin must have been washed inshore from the wreck. Finding the bay would cut our search for the galleon in half. Once over the falls, we had found the bay where the galleon sunk. Asper said there was no blue Danube here and had gone to conjure up some transport, leaving us to mull over the problems in searching the bay. The wreck can't be more than a mile out there. You know, if we use that Zodiac, we could operate from this beach easily. Yeah, why not? The O'Keefe Charter's almost up be a lot cheaper. Well, we could use vintage and live on the beach. I think that's a very... You know, if I rented a plane, I could mag that bay in no time. How heavy is a magnetometer? Mm, it's about... Hey, Hugo! How heavy is a magnetometer? It's light enough. I think it'll work like a charm. I say let's get the plane.
The cliffside lawn offered the only possible landing field. All 1,100 feet of it. Flaps full. Friction loose. Trimmed full back. Car beat on. And just a touch. In a very casual manner, I examined the undercarriage. It seemed okay. Rough as that landing field was, the old ruin called Folly made an excellent base camp. Where's... The saying goes, a piece of cake. What if we hit one of those cows on landing? <laughs> you got something against milk? Um. By searching from the air, we could cut our time in half. Even from a plane, metal and up to a hundred feet of water could be sensed by Joshua's magnetometer. Something solid, all right. Make a 180 and stand by. Righty ho. talkie and Vic would have the Zodiac out to the position in short order. There's your first mark. Good hunting. Yeah, right. Now for the goal. We'll see ya. was proving to be a ship's graveyard. One of them had to be the galleon. The German gunboat, circa World War I. Beautiful.
Yeah, Josh, what do you want? Tell you what, it's time to put those lobsters on. <laughs> what lobsters? Please. Cow, it's doing a hula. Make a 180, Hugo. We got a little hungry, so we ate it. Just mark it with a heavy buoy. These won't last the night. There's a wind coming up now. Okay, give us a bearing. We'll come right up. Isn't that falling on the right? Oh. <laughs> if we can find the cow. to go. <laughs> well, I think we may just have found it. Yeah. Found it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've even got a bell to prove it. Well, that's no gold. That comes tomorrow. Hey, great. Yeah. Tomorrow we dive for gold. Be sure to firm up that buoy. It could take weeks to find it again.
Well, everything you've got is tied up. In other words, we're guilty until proven innocent. Mr. Graham, you did violate the rental contract. Well, what do you recommend? Well, go to court and have the injunction removed. No, that's really something. Until you... that happy day, everything we have is tied up. I'll try to get it on the court list as quickly as possible. They might even offer a settlement before it comes to trial. Terrific. In the meanwhile, you can all look for jobs. Well, without work permits. Oh. Well, thanks, anyway. Just a minute. Do you deep dive? Well, how deep? I'll call you. Thanks. That afternoon, we got another body blow. The storm had taken out our buoy. We'd lost the galleon. I flew to Montego Bay to try to raise money. Seemed hopeless. And then we got the phone call. It was crazy. Salvage three coffins. Proof of death is required to collect insurance. Without the body, the law demands seven years. This client was in a hurry. Look, until the coffins are raised, my client can only offer expenses. Are you interested? If the conditions make it practical for us to dive, yes. But, uh, I mean, why hasn't it ever been offered to a regular commercial salvage outfit? Well, a commercial salvage outfit would not be interested. Wouldn't I have to turn the coffins over to the insurance company? Yes. Uh, first, we'll have to find the bodies and produce them and declare them legally dead. Then my client can collect his inheritance. Let's see. Where is the ship? It's in Port Antonio, just off the reef where you've been diving. The manifest goes from Bolivian rock sculpture to babies' diapers. However, number two hold is a mixed cargo, mainly cars, trucks, farm equipment. Coffins should be here, probably floating under the well deck. The question, do we want to get them out? The question, how much do they want to pay? Expenses, plus $1,000 on delivery <laughs> per coffin. <laughs> we want to get him out. Looking it over from the air, I discovered our lawyer was right. The Mastaba was just off the reef where we'd been diving, clearly marked by a long, dark oil slick. We rented a workboat and a compressor. It was nice to have an expense account. However, the Mastaba was completely different from diving on the shallow reef. She was in over 200 feet of water. No room for error. There it is. Now, Vic and Josh and I are going to do this job. Aww. I'll take Zabby on the first break. Dada can go on the next one with Vic. Okay. At around 150 feet, the cold, gray outline of the bridge appeared. We dropped from the shot line to the well deck and its relative security. of the bridge stared grimly back at us as we moved slowly up towards dark void. I tried to encourage Zabby inside, but she wanted no part of it. side of the 600-foot monster, eerily frosted by an inordinate amount of phosphorescent hydroids. A quick check of the depth gauge showed a firm 180. 
Moving aft, we found ourselves dwarfed by the huge funnel. We swam past the fated radio shack. But after more than two years, the empty daffets bore witness to that final message and the order to abandon the ship. I pointed out the debris littered swimming pool and the powerful spotlights still maintaining their darkened vigil. But Zabby kept looking over her shoulder, grimly fascinated by the ocean going barracuda. salon and one set of lifeboat falls after another the wearisome grinding of the dead hull made it impossible to believe that gaiety and laughter ever rang from these now dark voids at last we reached the bridge rail our bottom time had run out and we went up the short line. Standing straight out. I don't expect any trouble. Now, I must admit, I was really scared down there. Well, that's understandable. It's a mean dive. But we need that money. Tomorrow we go for the coffins. salvage rights. This is their goal. They don't bother me. It's only a few coins. It's going to take time to find that chest. Nobody, but nobody is going to come between me and that. Yeah, yeah. That my stop is deep. Accidents happen all the time. And nobody is going to go that deep to hold a post-mortem. <laughs> Vic, let out some more line on that, with you? I'm going to tangle around this oxygen tank. All right, it's clear. I had found a maintenance door on the port side of the center of number two hold. We opened it up. morning, we began the search for the three coffins. If they were floating, and at this depth, I fully expected them to be doing just that, the coffins would be relatively easy to find. However, if they had sunk, I knew we'd be in for a long search. Vic and Josh had not agreed with me, but I'd refused to use dynamite, and for good reason. If we once disturbed the cargo, we might lose all chances of finding the coffins. Anyway, I had no intention of attracting sharks in these waters. Dropping down the side of the massive hull, we went through a cold thermocline, and a compulsive shiver ran through my body. Outside, all seemed quiet ghost-like, but inside.
stabber had reached a very steep angle before making its final plunge into the deep. I had expected rupture of bulkheads, floating debris, and a shift of cargo. But loading nets was something else. against the underside of the well deck.
moment, there seemed a possibility that there was another way to reach Josh. That's stupid. Yeah, I think you'd be that stupid. You're crazy! Put this thing down. You don't use your head. Ah, oh, get, get off my back. It's very simple. I'm pull the pin here, and we'll get a little closer to him. I'm gonna lob this right out, and land right down on that boat. That he ain't too good. <laughs> Listen, Zabby. There was no way we could get Josh out of there. We've gone over the plans and the loading of this ship until we know it by heart. The only other way in there is through number one hold. And even if we could get in there, there's 300 tons of machinery piled on the after bulkhead. Josh's is the only chance is the chance we're taking. Go to Port Antonio and get the salvage truck. Pull the truck clear. He's got doubles. Gives us about one hour. Awesome. Just a couple of minutes. Hey, Vic? Yeah. Dive in, will you? It'll be easier to pick you out of the water. Go ahead. Hey. We'll look at him like that and we'll send out the whole fleet. We're 
leave for Port Antonio now. These people don't have much time. Why don't we use the salvage boat sand channel? You know it, Major. Sure, sure, but I don't see it. Well, how about Fletcher's dock? There it is. Get ahead. Okay, you tell him not to worry, and I'll be right behind you. Yeah. Let me have the rest of it. Isn't that enough? No, I need it all. Okay. May have to double it up in order to hold up the truck. Okay? Hurry.
The sand shadow was just what we needed. And obviously Vic had filled Asper in. We went to work. The cable's wandering. Thank <laughs> you. 
green is this? Down. They're drifting right out over the reef. Come on, Sabby. The weight belt and don't drop it. Ugh. You'll drop it. I know. She'll drop it. 